Hey the Rumblers and Rovers, this is Miguel coming at you from the city of Querétaro here in northern central Mexico. Querétaro is one of my favorite cities in the whole country. This place has such a vibrant cultural scene. It is home to many artists, museums. It has one of the largest, best preserved downtowns in all of Mexico making it one of the best places in Mexico to come to enjoy for the beautiful culture and the beauty of its architecture. I used to live in Querétaro for a short time and I want to show you some of the amazing things you can do here and why you should add this to your Mexico bucket list so that you too can have your very own rambling and roving adventure. Let's go explore! Querétaro is a city that attracts a lot of artists. It's a very colorful city and there are always concerts going on in the downtown or art exhibits, tons of museums. It also has this very, very vibrant cultural scene. So if you're a cultural enthusiast like I am, this is a very, very amazing place to get a sense of that vibe here in Mexico. And if you like history, Querétaro is a very, very old city dating back to the colonial period. It was founded to the north of Mexico City at a time when the Spaniards were settling the north searching for silver. So it's this halfway point between the silver mines in Guanajuato and Zacatecas and Mexico City. So it prospered as this trading hub and the place outside of which there were all these cattle ranches. There's just so much history here. It's a part of the Mexican independence route and all these little different towns that were a part of the different conflicts that occurred during different stages of Mexican history. Everything from the colonization of the country to the independence movement, the revolution and the different colonial wars that were fought here. Right behind me you have the temple of St. Francis here in downtown Querétaro. This is Jardín Cenea, one of the central plazas here in the downtown. And the temple of San Francisco de Asís, or the temple of St. Francis, is one of the most impressive structures among Querétaro's many, many temples and churches. It has this really, really beautiful representation of San Santiago who is the patron saint of Spain, St. James. Querétaro is actually named Santiago de Querétaro. So it just speaks to the importance that this saint has as the patron of this entire city, which you can see in Querétaro's most impressive structure. It is the largest city in the region of El Bajío. El Bajío is where the Mexican plateau starts sloping down towards northern Mexico. So it still very much is the central 
highland part of Mexico so it's always very pleasant to be here it never gets too cold it never gets too hot even in the summer for example when I was living here houses don't even have AC which is amazing for Mexico because you don't really need them all you need to do is crack a window open so it has amazing weather to explore nothing too uncomfortable right now we're here during November so maybe it might get chilly during the night but nothing too drastic it, as you can see I'm just wearing a t-shirt right now so very pleasant weather to just be out and exploring and walking another one of the things that I absolutely love about the city is its walkability it is once you are in the downtown everything is accessible on foot it's actually quite encouraged to just go around and explore the city by foot so that you can get a sense of of the flavor the actual spirit of the land by exploring the city on foot just taking your time slowly you know don't rush it on car take it slow by foot this is just such a vibrant bohemian city like it has some of the best preserved buildings and downtown in all of mexico which makes it an amazing place to go out by night among these old buildings finding all these cool little nooks street foods or getting finding a good restaurant So this is the Andalor Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May um, touristic corridor that connects the Jardín Cenea, where we just were and where we saw the Temple of Santo Domingo, with the Plaza de Armas right down here. The Plaza de Armas was the site of one of Mexico's most important historical events, which was when this woman, the Corregidora José Ortiz de Domínguez, the wife of basically this high-ranking Spanish official let the original Mexican independence movement leaders know that the Spaniards had discovered their conspiracy to make in Mexico independent from Spain. So they used to live in this house back here, which you can find at the Plaza de Armas. When her husband got wind that she was going to warn the, conspirator, the conspirators, he locked her away in this house and through the keyhole she let them know that they had been found out and that's what actually detonated the Mexican independence movement that would eventually turn this into an independent country. So they're preparing the plaza for the Christmas celebrations which are going to be here in a couple of weeks. So, Querétaro is getting decked out for the holidays, so it's an exciting time to be here. Mexican Christmases tend to be very colorful, full of lights and fireworks and just tons of celebration. You know, we're a very celebratory people and Querétaro is no different. So cool time to be here. So this is one of my favorite plazas here in Querétaro. This is the Plaza de Armas so-called because it used to be the mustering grounds for the garrison and this statue is the statue of the Marques del Villar who was a Marquez who lived here in Querétaro who funded the construction of the aqueduct which we're going to see in a little bit that provided the city with fresh drinking water from outside of the city which enabled it to grow to an important sizable city Just another one of the reasons why you should include Querétaro and the Bajío region as a part of your itinerary for Mexico more broadly is that Querétaro is this amazing city to do so many things out of so it can be a great base of operations out of which you can base your travels so you have so many different little towns so many pueblos mágicos so many different attractions and so many other things that you can do out from here 
So that includes going on a day trip to San Miguel de Allende, which is only 40 minutes away by car. Maybe an hour and a half away if you're going by bus. Or if you're going to Bernal, another Pueblo Magico with its monolithic stone that rises up from the landscape. Or if you want to do a trip into the Sierra Gorda and exploring the, that magnificent biosphere, that, that secluded, mountainous, magical biosphere in the Sierra Gorda. Esqueretra is just a two hour drive away from Mexico City, I believe two or three hours away from Mexico City. So you can always fly into Mexico City, travel up here and by bus, stay around in this area and just kind of get so many of these little towns in. Houses in this whole region of Mexico are built in the Riyadh style with the central courtyard characteristic of Mexican and Spanish architecture. So a lot of these old houses used to be manor homes for the Spanish nobility or, and later on for the mestizos who would come to dominate Mexican politics. So many of these buildings have been well preserved, turned into businesses or restaurants or hotels but they still preserve their characteristic colonial, Mexican colonial flavor. So here's another statue of Santiago, erected by the city of Querétaro. I would say that people from Querétaro tend to be very conservative, and Querétaro just still retains that Catholic atmosphere, with just how present the Catholic Church is like, throughout this whole city. So this plaza is called Plaza de los Fundadores, so called because this was the site of Querétaro's founding in 1531. That is almost 500 years. This is an old city for this continent. So here you have all of these very noble looking Spanish gentlemen wearing clothes from the 16th century commemorating the founding of this of this city So souvenir shops and peddlers here on the street will sell all these different um, dolls that are very typical here in Querétaro they're called Querétaro dolls I, I believe and they just kind of have all kinds of different styles of them. Some of them are like fashion after like La Llorona or like different like characters. You're gonna see them all around the town. So it's just kind of like a cultural symbol of Querétaro. So just in case you're, you're wondering when you come here and you just see them all over the city. So right by the side of this little chapel that is to the side of the main temple here, you have this plaque that says that this is the convent from which so many of the missionaries who evangelized the indigenous populations would leave on their missionary trips. So that includes trips into the Sierra Gorda, which is now famous for the route of the missions or the convents because it, every single town was founded around um, a convent. So they're very beautiful structures, very much worth visiting if you're here visiting the Bajillo region. For much of its history, Querétaro and the lands to the north were the frontier. So northern Mexico, way back when would have been like trying to go to the far side of the moon now so just a very very isolated place that only the bravest of missionaries would try to go you know risking getting shot with arrows or whatever so this is one of my favorite bars here it's called la selva taurina it has different um locales throughout Querétaro. It's a bullfighter themed bar. 
It can get a little rough, but it's one of the most colorful places you can go here in town. It's just located right to the back of that convent that we just saw. This is a funky little house with tons of painted pottery on the top. Queretaro has a big modern component to it. You can get anything you need here in the city. Just any modern convenience and there are tons of international brands. Obviously in the downtown you're not going to see much of that. It's located towards the sides. So it really is just this, like an actual city. So Queretaro used to have walls surround, surrounding parts of the city. So Mexico was an empire three times. First when it was independent, then later under Santa Ana, who lost half of Mexican territory to the US. And then afterwards, when the French invaded Mexico, I mean, most of you will remember Cinco de Mayo, which is not Mexican Independence Day, but rather the commemoration of a battle that we won against the French. So when the French came and won the, fir the first stage of that war against Mexico and, and set a Habsburg as Emperor of Mexico, it detonated years of civil war. Querétaro was actually the city where they ended up capturing this emperor, Maximiliano von Habsburg. And this hole right behind me is the actual hole through which the Republican army entered the city during the siege of Querétaro back in the 1860s. So this was a very, this is a very historic part of of the city and they just kind of left the hole there, the breach in the wall to commemorate, I mean, the, that battle. You can find it on the way behind the, te the temple, on your way towards the lookout spot where you can see the aqueduct that you spring water into the city, which we're gonna see right now. So, this spot marks the end of, that, of the downtown and right behind me you can see the aqueduct running along the outside of what would have been the city back then and which is now covered with the urban sprawl of the modern part of Querétaro. Right behind me you have Milenio Hill where that's actually where I used to live when I lived here so I would just drive along the aqueduct and just into the downtown and just kind of go out and see what kind of trouble I could get into. But Querétaro is very much a very livable city. It's a very cool place to, to be. Very modern. It has just, you know, you all, the movie theaters you want to you wanna go to, all the stores. And also you have the benefit of the, one of the largest downtown areas in Mexico that is just preserved. So it is a very beautiful city. One of my favorite places in Mexico. So right by the lookout spot to see the aqueduct, you also have this church here, which houses the remains of some of Querétaro's citizens who took part in the Mexican independence movement, as well as other people of note. It's a good place to come if you want to learn more about local history and just kind of get a sense of the stories of the people who called it home and who left their mark on this land and Mexican history in general. Although Querétaro is very popular among local tourists, among Mexicans, you don't see that many foreign tourists here. And it's something that I've always wondered why, considering just how vibrant and just how <laughs> cool and amazing uh, this whole region is. Be sure, including your itinerary for Mexico, I would say maybe a week if you really want to rush the whole region, or more realistically, maybe a couple of weeks to week and a half, couple of weeks to really experience the, all these different little towns which are the cradle of Mexican independence. <coughs> this is Querétaro's aqueduct. It's a very impressive structure that runs from Millennial Hill all the way to the downtown. And just this whole street, this whole area 
have tons of little restaurants and bars. So it's a cool little place to visit, like on the weekends or to come have lunch. Magnificent structure. There are so many cool little nooks around downtown Querétaro. All you really need to do is just put on a good pair of walking shoes and just head out and to see what you can find. Between the different plazas there are all these different streets, some of which are for pedestrians only. And they're lined with all these shops where you can get snacks and souvenirs. And it's, an, so it's a very walkable city. And it's one of those things that we just really enjoy doing here. Just exploring by foot, taking your time. Some of the things to do in Querétaro include visiting the different churches. The citizens of Querétaro put a lot of energy into beautifying their town with all this religious art, especially in the churches. So it's worth it to visit and just kind of take in the ambience, even if you're not a religious person. So we hope you enjoyed this video, this tour around Querétaro. Hopefully you can add this city and the surrounding regions to your travel itinerary for Mexico. It is very much worth it to come here to see and experience all the wonders that Querétaro has to offer for yourself. I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, like this video, drop a comment, even saying hi. It really helps our channel grow. We're trying to grow this amazing community of travelers, ramblers, and rovers just like you. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers so it would be in the world to me if you would smash that subscribe button. Until the next adventures, amigos, keep on traveling. Stay safe, my friends.